In 2010, the government of the United States, CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, approved payment for a heart patient with a recent heart attack, stroke, bypass, stent, or chronic anginal chest pain to undergo intense outpatient education and exercise modeled after either one or two of these pioneers, Dr. Ornish and Dr. Pritikin. They were very stringent before they approved it. They had denied the application many times. Uh, they wanted bigger numbers, bigger numbers, bigger numbers. And ultimately, Dr. Ornish published research involving thousands of patients. And so did Mr. Pritikin. So they did get approval. And I'm happy to say in my state of Michigan, until about two years ago, out of all the hospitals in the state of Michigan that offer cardiac rehabilitation, only one in Ann Arbor, Michigan, St. Joseph Mercy Hospital, offered one of these programs, the Pritikin program. Now we're up to about four or five. Some of these are in small private clinics, and the pandemic certainly hurt the accessibility to cardiac rehab over the last two years. Most are now reopened. But a very tiny fraction of hospitals recognize that they can do so much good for established heart patients by offering what's called intensive cardiac rehab, teaching a low fat diet, uh, but hopefully we'll see more and more. And ask your hospital if they can consider implementing an intensive cardiac rehab program. You can't give a talk about heart disease reversal and low fat, low oil diets without coming across Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn from the Cleveland Clinic, recently had his 88th birthday, happy birthday. A strategy to arrest and reverse coronary disease, a 12 year longitudinal study of a single physician's practice. That was the title of one of his numerous publications, research publications on the topic. And I wanted to emphasize because the Topic we're covering today is new science, new questions, new conversations. His diet certainly included all animal products as a recommendation and added oils. I will say it also excluded avocados, olives, and nuts as a general recommendation. Although again, uh, nuts like walnuts and Brazil nuts have been relaxed a little bit in some of the patients. The diet achieved a very low fat percentage. 11% of calories from fat is similar to Okinawa, Japan, which is a natural diet with great longevity. It's not a completely plant-based diet, but it is a very healthy diet based on their longevity. And uh, you could use cholesterol lowering medication by the time Dr. Esselstyn was involved with these patients and certainly emphasize exercise, but not as structured as Mr. Pritikin or Dr. Ornish. But of course, famous, famous, and all respect given here is that Dr. Esselstyn has taught tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people that amongst their food choices, no oil. And I wanna examine the science of that in 2022 this morning. And for those of you listening on a recording, whenever you do listen to it. So Dr. Esselstyn contributed hugely to our understanding of the reversal of heart disease with famous angiograms like this uh, within a period of less than three years. Uh, on the left, distal LAD severely narrowed by atherosclerosis and on the right restored to excellent opening or what we call patency by food and unstructured exercise and if necessary use of pharmacologic agents like statins, provostatin particularly if needed. Where does all this come from? So I'm gonna shift gears. We have to give all the accolades to those pioneers and others that I mentioned that established that heart disease is reversible. And I'll simply say in my clinic, I see the reversibility of atherosclerosis routinely, frequently, and predictably. I establish it by using ultrasound of the carotids called the carotid intimal medial thickness exam. That way I don't have to subject people to radiation and catheterization, but it is definitely true and a very active practice. So I get the joy of telling patients every week, look how much of your plaque has reversed. But let's go a little deeper into the diet heart conversation. And it's often called diet heart hypothesis. And it reads something like this. 
And this is the synthesis of 70 years of research. A diet high in saturated fat will generally raise the blood or serum cholesterol level, will lead to the risk of developing plaques, we call them atheroma or gruel-like or hardening of the arteries. Over time, it will allow coronary arteries to become narrowed with both calcified hard and uh, soft non-calcified plaque and put a person at risk for a heart attack or the development of angina chest pain. Um, the emphasis is on saturated fat. That hasn't always been the emphasis. And I just want to point out, this is the diet heart hypothesis. This isn't the smoking heart. This isn't the sedentary lifestyle heart. This isn't the stress heart. This isn't the poor sleep apnea heart hypothesis. Food and cholesterol are one part of the equation, but they're a very important part of the equation. So we have 100 years plus of evidence we don't talk a lot about a German pathologist, Rudolf Virchow, but in 1910, he identified you can create a model of creating plaque in the wall of an artery, in this case, rabbits, by feeding them a high fat, high cholesterol diet. And this was followed up by a Russian investigator, Anichko, uh, that showed it also. So we had models that at least an animal uh, uh, subjects that um, the quality of the diet could influence the development of atherosclerosis and narrowings. Now, this is a very important man. This is Dr. Ansel Keys. He held two PhDs, one from Cambridge and one from Scripps in, the, uh, in San Diego. And I want you to look at the map. This is the city of Minneapolis where he was a professor at University of Minneapolis. He had a brief stay at Harvard, but spent the rest of his career at University of Minneapolis, although he lived half the year in Italy for 40 years of his life. And you can see the top of the graph is diseases in Minneapolis, 1926 to 1956 had generally dropped, but heart disease had risen. And it was on a, a rapid pace of creating more and more disability and death and he wanted to know why. He was a nutrition scientist, had done much research on fasting, had developed, you may know that, the K rations used to support soldiers in World War II. K was for his last name, Ansel Keys, about 3,000 calories you carried in your gunny pack while you were in the jungles or in the desert. So if you had to survive with just your own food, you had a very concentrated source of uh, energy and calories. And after asking a number of questions, he developed a prospective study that launched in 1958 and was published thousands of pages of data in 1970 and many, many more publications that include up to this day. And he looked at very different populations, populations in the United States, where there was a high heart attack rate, populations in Finland, where there was the highest heart attack rate, populations like Greece and Japan that had low heart attack rates, a variety of poor communities in Italy, the Netherlands and Yugoslavia. Why these seven countries and 16 communities? Because number one, the researchers were there, they were on board and agreed to uh, do the hard, hard work in the pre-computer era uh, that they did this work, 1958 through 1970. Uh, they wanted very different uh, populations. Let's look at the diet where there's a low heart attack rate. Let's look at the diet where there's a high heart attack rate. And let's see if anything can be identified and isolated that predicts the development of heart attacks. So what was found, I want you to look at the bottom of this graph. This is the risk of in 1948 to 1949 of developing lethal heart disease in uh, men based on the percentage of their calories from fat. And as you can see, the higher the amount of calories from fat as a percentage of total calories, there was certainly a relationship to the higher risk of death. And United States was the highest on the map and Japan was the lowest with Italy also quite low, the famous Mediterranean diet we'll talk about. But I wanna point out to you, this was 1948 to 1949. This was before Dr. Keyes launched the prospective study in 1958. This was a hypothesis. Maybe the rise in heart disease in Minneapolis is due to a rise in the amount of fat calories 
in the diet. Well, that turned out to be something they examined and altered. I'm going to show you that. So this is uh, planning before the launch of the 1958 seven country study, a trip to Italy. Dr. Keyes is all the way to your left, holding a paper booklet, perhaps. I want to point out the gentleman with the bushy white eyebrows and mustache is Paul Dudley White Jr., the chief of cardiology at Harvard, President Eisenhower's cardiologist, author of the most famous heart disease book in his era, the 50s and the 60s. And the other gentlemen are from different parts of the world. One is from Japan and one is from Yugoslavia. These were collaborators. And you can look around and see these are small, poor villages in Italy, famous for their low heart disease rates. And one of the first observations they made before they fully published the um, seven country study, that not all fats were the same risk of coronary artery disease. Hmm. So I want you to look particularly, well, look at Japan. Japan is consistent with Mr. Morrison, Dr. Ornish, Mr. Pritikin, uh, and Dr. Esselstyn. The overall percentage of calories from fat in Japan were 10%, and the risk of heart disease in men was quite low. Looks like overall low-fat diets are very heart disease preventive. But the confusing picture became Eastern Finland and Crete in the 1950s and 60s. They both consumed about 40% of their calories from fat, 40%. That's a lot. But in Crete, there were nearly no heart disease uh, developments like heart attacks. And in Eastern Finland, there were lots of heart attacks. In fact, the number one in the Western world. You can get a little clue if you look below Eastern Finland, they were eating a diet rich in whole fat dairy, butter, sausage. It was very different in Crete. That's a bottle of olive oil. Uh, and it's lots of fresh fruits and vegetables in Crete. Very different. So if you looked at this graph, you'd say, this doesn't really fit the model that all fats are related to a high risk of heart disease. Let's be like the Cretans and do what they're doing because they are enjoying a nearly heart attack free epidemiology. And what the seven country study teased out was that more than any other component of diet, saturated fat in the seven country study was the key driver of developing coronary heart disease, CHD events. And if you look at this, this is uh, the 16 communities in the seven country study published in 1970 by Dr. Keyes and 17 other very prominent scientists. It wasn't just him. And there were communities that had very low saturated fat intake, percentage of calories to the left, and communities with very high saturated fat. The highest was Finland, and the United States was number two. And if you looked at the risk of coronary heart disease deaths and heart attack, there was a strong linear correlation. Correlation meaning it appeared that a high saturated fat diet was related to developing coronary heart disease, having a heart attack or dying from it. Uh, it's another issue to say it's the cause of it, but there were so many other studies by now in animals, feeding studies, metabolic lab studies. So this um, changed the perspective that Dr. Keyes had in the late 1940s and early 1950s, that it was all fat percentage calories that was linked to the rise in coronary heart disease like heart attacks to focusing like a laser beam on saturated fat. Indeed, Dr. Keyes went on to write a series of books. He wrote them with his wife, Margaret. Uh, Dr. Keyes lived to age 100.5. Margaret lived, I think, to age 96. This worked out pretty well for them. You can see the introduction was written on these books by Paul Dudley White, MD. These books were huge bestsellers in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, um, allowed Dr. Keyes to buy a very lovely home on the Mediterranean Ocean south of Naples in a little tiny town called Piope. I'll show you that. And prior to these books, the Mediterranean diet in the United States was largely unknown. So he really gets credit for introducing the single most famous diet across the world, the Mediterranean healthy diet. This is a moment of memory for me, but this was a visit to Piope, Italy, south of Naples. 
In Italian, it says the world capital of the Mediterranean diet, Benvenito Apiopi. And the other picture shows that there's actually a museum where Dr. Ansel Keys had his library. I was there. I took pictures in it and where there's a museum to the Mediterranean diet, the only one in the world I'm aware of. It was a wonderful trip. Piope is a town of only 300. Piope is not considered what some people call a blue zone because there just aren't enough people, but it certainly looked to be a place where there's a lot of longevity and it's very close to other places where there's a lot of longevity, like a little town north of it called Acciaroli that became very famous. Uh, just a minute, this is the museum to the Mediterranean diet. I could have picked other pictures of the Mediterranean diet food pyramid, but if you look at the very base of it, it's lots of whole fruits and vegetables followed by grains, whole grains. I see a glass of red wine, maybe you do too. I see a pitcher of olive oil. I don't see a stick of butter, but I do see a pitcher of olive oil. Then you see fish. It is the Mediterranean diet. Then there's limited dairy, limited eggs, and limited meats above. This has never been a completely vegan diet, as described by Dr. Keyes. I have his cookbooks. They are very definitely not vegan diets, but you won't find butter. You'll find extra virgin olive oil, and you'll find lots of fruit and vegetable whole grain dishes for sure. <music>